The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host. Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OA, the host of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terminas on Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube and those watching on Oriented Television. A lot to look at this week here around the league here. Obviously, we're going to talk playoff scenarios, obviously, here. A lot with football. Um, basically, um, you know, we've had some... Games that were decided from week seven and others that were, um, you know, that were, um, you know, that haven't been decided yet. Um, of course, we have a champion in the red division um, in Lake Orion. Um, we're going to talk Lake Orion in a couple minutes here. Also, we have um, the white champion, South Bend Arts and Tech. Um, the blue championship likely to be decided this week between um, Seaholm and Oak Park. Um, and then... Of course, the gold division, Avondale, has wrapped up that division title. So, you know, let's look at the recaps of last week. Obviously, when you look at the situation, how that has been. Um, you know, when you look at the games last week, and, you know, there were some games that I thought could really have been like, um, you know, really, really just like some surprises. Some of them were just a little bit out of, out of the ordinary here. Um I really think when you look at the um when you really look at some games here that I, I just think that um you know we're gonna look at our first game here of course um I think the game that probably was the most craziest of the bunch was over at Troy Athens. And Troy Athens knocked off Royal Oak 38-37. That went overtime. Um just really impressed with how Troy Athens um, you know, I mean, Royal Oak offensively had a big night. I mean, they had a big night. And, you know, I mean, offensively, I felt like, you know, there were time it was a back-and-forth battle with Royal Oak and Troy, Athens. Um, it was a back-and-forth. Went overtime, 31-31. Um, what happened there was, um, you know, Royal Oak um, scored a touchdown, missed the extra point. And then Troy Athens went and scored, got the extra point, won the game, 38-37. Um, good win for Coach Tom Cook. I mean, just really good win for them. Um, and then, you know, for Troy Athens, you know, it keeps their postseason hopes alive. Um, obviously, you know, with Troy Athens, um, with their postseason hopes, I mean, bottom line for Troy, they got to win out. I mean, that's really what it is they've got to win out and i think when you look at the situation troy athens in you know now everything starts and ends for them if they can go and beat troy that's really what it is because if they lose that game to troy it there's their um postseason dreams are over so, for Troy Athens to make the postseason for the first time since 2011, not counting 2020, by the way, um, for them, they got to knock off, they have to knock off um, our tribal Troy, and that's not going to be an easy game for them. Now, on the flip side for Royal Oak, um, I'll tell you what, Colin Campbell has done a really nice job of that program. He, I mean, I think he stabilized some things. They're not where they want to be at. But I thought offensively they looked better. Defensively giving up 38 is a little too high. Um, But when you really look at where this team's been, you know, I think Colin Campbell's done a really nice job um, putting his stamp on this program. And I think Royal Oaks got a pathway, pathway to success right now. Um, They just got to keep working. And they got a chance this week in the Battle of Woodward. They got a great chance to take to take the street sign back from Berkeley. You know, bring it back to Lexington. That's going to be an interesting game. But I like the direction Royal Oaks been going right now. I really do. Um, Troy 48, Berkeley nothing. I mean, Berkeley... 
I've lost a lot of words here to describe this. I mean, coming into the year, I thought Berkeley would be better. You know, I've heard everything. But it looks like, you know, bottom line is, it's hard to explain what's going on there. It's hard to explain. Because, you know, there's been games that have gotten shut out um, where they just haven't looked very good. And here in this game against Troy, albeit, you know, Troy, they still got some injuries. Um, Nolan Block had a big game for them. Noah Early's been very good all year long for them. I mean, they've been he's been really good for them all year long. So when I look at Troy's situation, Troy's the last team. When you look at the playoff point standings right now, Troy's the last team in the playoffs right now. But when you look at the stats, they got to win out. They have to win out. Because when you look at Troy, their situation is this. Because they've got Troy Athens and Frazier this coming up. Those are their next two games. Frazier is a team that's also battling for the same spot. They're also a playoff t- trying to get in the playoffs. They're also a team that is on that bubble, as is Troy Athens. Troy's got the last spot to be in the playoffs. They got the last spot. So when you really look at the situation, how that's unfolded, I mean, clearly, clearly, I mean, it's going to come down to is can Troy, um, you know, can Troy, you know, finish the deal? Can they win these next two games? I mean, the Athens game, I think it's going to be very tricky because of that, of that matchup. We're going to preview that game in a couple minutes. But when you look at Troy's situation, when it comes to the postseason, all they got to do is win. That's all they got to do. If they don't, the season's done. That's really what it is. Um, let's look at um, North Farmington 66-8 over Pontiac. Um, you know, kind of expected how this game would go over at um, Ron Holland Field. Uh, for North Farmington, this game solidifies them in the playoffs in Division Two. Um, and then when you look at Pontiac's case here, um, they're better than they were. I'll be honest with you. They're better than they were. Um, but when you really look at that game here, it was really not much of a contest and it kind of showing the score. So that's my take on that game. I mean, really is really not much to talk about in that game. Um, Oak Park 22-9 over Ferndale. Of course, this game was called because of a um because of what's been in the news recently. Of course, there was a um So, when you look at the situation there, um I think, you know, Ferndale's postseason hopes, you know, have took a big hit from this because of you know, and the fact that it was that they were in the game it was only a 13 point game. I mean, they go down and score, you know, but with six minutes to go in the game, you know, you're still down two scores, but you still got a chance. But for Ferndale, for Coach Eric Royal, um, this loss to Oak Park really hurts them. Because when you look at that schedule coming up, they got Groves on there and they got St. Clair Shore Sot Lake. Um, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for them to try to get in the postseason. It's going to be really difficult because of the scenario that they're in now. Because now they got to win out and they got to get some help. And I don't know if I see it right now. I just don't know if I see it. Now, in Oak Park's case, they got to win at least one or two, I think, to get in the playoffs. The problem is for Oak Park is those two games coming up, they got to play either Seaholm. They got Seaholm and West Bloomfield. I'm not sure if that West Bloomfield game gets moved to West Bloomfield or not. But, you know, considering what's what happened over at Oak Park. Um, <laughs> but I'm not sure. I mean, like, because I know that game is scheduled to be at Oak Park for 6 o'clock kickoff. Um, if that game gets moved to the Swamp, um, 
I I would feel a little bit more better about it. Um, from a safety perspective, but you know, I, I think honestly, you know, from a safety perspective, I think the game should be moved to the swamp. So we'll see. We'll see what Oak Park does. But Oak Park right now, you win one or two, you're in the playoffs. <laughs> I mean, you win one or two, you're in the playoffs. So big week coming up for Oak Park. If they beat Seaholm, because I don't know if I see them beating West Bluefield, considering, you know, you look at what West Bluefield's got. I mean, and then Oak Park. Oak Park, I think it's limited offensively a little bit. And then you put them in a game against West Bluefield where their defense is very legit. And then you have a defense coming up in Seaholm who is very legit as well. Um, Tough task. If they lose out, they're done. That's really what it is. They lose out, they're done. So, for Oak Park, it's just win one at two. You do that, you're in the playoffs. You don't, you're done. I mean, you, win, you really went out, you're in, for sure. But if you lose, you're done. So, that's my take on that game. Um, but for Ferndale, I feel bad for the kids. Feel bad for the coaches. Um, just unfortunate what happened over there. Um, the scenario there. <laughs> I mean, bottom line is, um, you know, and that's honesty here. Um, you know, I, I just feel really bad for the kids right now. Just everything that's gone wrong. I mean, it's unfortunate. Really unfortunate. Um, <laughs> and then I think the game of the day with the blue gold crossover, um, Seaholm beat Avondale 20 to nothing. Um, <laughs> again, both teams, um, firmly locked in the playoffs. Um, I guess it was a gut check game for Avondale. And <laughs> it was a game where in which both teams were, um, just kind of coming in, just, you know, coming in, winner will likely get a competence boost. Loser probably would be, most likely be going on the road for the playoffs. <coughs> Excuse my coughing. I mean, but credit where credit's due. I mean, both Kenny brothers played well. Jack Lewis had a nice game. Um... Shut down Avondale's high-octane offense. Shut down Jake Herzog. Um, they shut down um, Justin Greer-Sykes. They shut down Cooper Volfrey. <laughs> really didn't let Avondale run their wing tee or force them outside. Also credits to Kyle Robbins as well. I mean, he did a nice game as well. I mean, for Coach MD Wall, Big win for them. Because now you got a big one coming up with Oak Park. Most likely for the division title. And then Groves to close out the year. I remember Coach Jim D. Wall's comments. <laughs> when he said on the podcast a couple... I mean, like last couple months ago. And I know that this team wants to get back at Groves. There's a golden opportunity that awaits him. The motivation for Seahome is this. You win both games, you're guaranteed a home game. <laughs> if you don't, you're most likely going to see Water for Mott in the first round. And I think if you're Groves, that's a beautiful match for you. Now, yes, Water for Mott's got Caleb Osborne. And don't get me wrong. Caleb Osborne's a hell of a quarterback. But I think. Groves matches up really well with Water for Mott. They really do. Seaholm, <laughs> I think, also matches up Water for Mott pretty well. Because the teams in the Lakes Valley don't run a veer. They don't run the option. I mean, I don't see anybody in that conference 
that runs that type of offense. They, they really don't. And Seattle has one of the most unique offenses in the entire OA, which is the Veer. They do. I mean, other than them, Adams runs it, I think, probably it's the best out of everybody. And I'll tell you what, they match up pretty, I think both Birmingham schools match up very well to Water Vermont. Whoever wins that game, and they see Water Vermont in their district, I would take their chances. On the flip side with Avenue, you're firmly locked in the playoffs in Division Three. Um, I could see a district for sure with them, with Fenton. <laughs> Maybe have to go through Wall Lake Western. I mean, we talked a couple weeks ago. Um, Coach Bob Meyer and I talked a couple weeks ago. Um, that's a possibility. That Water Vermont, you know, that um, the Avondale could see Wall Lake Western in the next round. And I think Avondale matches up pretty well with them. I really do. I mean, Wall Lake Western's got a habit of playing um, to level their competition. They got a habit of it. So, when you look at Avondale's situation there, they're firmly a lock. Um, it's just, it's just going into the scenario of, okay, let's see what happens. We'll see what happens. So, I think Avondale's fine. I mean, they got Pontiac coming up and then Warren Fitzgerald to close out the year. Um, those are games I think they're going to be favored. So, I, Avondale's fine. I'm not pressing the panic button. I think they're going to be fine. I really do. Um, and then let's look at the white games. I mean, obviously from last week, Harper Woods, 55, Farmington, nothing. This game wasn't even a contest. I watched that game on Farmington TV 10. Cam Petaway came back. That's good for Farmington. Really good for them. But they didn't have any pressure on him. Nate Washell, none. He just could go out there and throw easy. He could just go out there and throw the ball all day. And he did that. He picked the park farm to secondary. Um, Ravity House had a touchdown. Um, Dakota Gary had two touchdowns. I mean, you know, it's not a bad start for, um, for a freshman. I'll tell you that much right now. Dakota Gary is going to be a very good player. He's a very good player for Coach Robbo. Very good player. Harper Woods, to me, is solely locked in Division Four. For me, it comes down to is can Harper Woods get home field? Schedule's tough. I mean, they got Roseville to close out the year. They got Clarkson this week, which is very difficult. Really difficult. So, we'll see how that one goes. But, I haven't seen a lot of um, Jacob Oden yet. I haven't seen a lot of him yet. Not sure if he's hurt or not, but I didn't think he played much in that game against Farmington. But, he'll probably play a lot against Clarkston and against Roseville. And then you look at that playoff scenario there, for them, for them it's just getting home field. I mean... Obviously, Division Four looks very manageable for Harper Woods. I mean, I'm looking at Harper Woods' scenario right now, and I'm looking at I'm looking at Snooze to use map. I'm pulling that up right now on my phone here. Um, for Harper Woods, um, I think that if um, for them right now, according to Snooze. Um, and he does a really good job with his playoff maps, by the way. He does a really good job with his playoff maps. Harper Woods, obviously, when you look at where he's got him going. And uh, he's got him playing Dearborn Divine Child in the first round. Now, in his side, he's got Redford Union. Redford Union's not a bad team. I mean, they're 6-1 right now. Um, they played a tough schedule. I mean, they beat Garden City, who's a who's a solid team. I mean, they were just... The only loss was week one against them, um, Westland John Glenn, where they were just 
they were just hammered that game by the Patriots. Um, Redford Thurston, I mean, they're going to get tested for sure when they play Allen Park. But I think if you look at that district, if that was the district, and I think it's looking more and more like it's going to be the district for Coach for um, Coach Rob Oden's team. I mean, Dearborn Devon Child, they can be beat. They can be had. I think for Harper Woods, playing the OA schedule, playing those D1, D2s, should help them. Now, with Redford Union, if they have to go to Redford, which I think they're going to be favoring that game, because Harper Woods has played a by far tougher schedule. <laughs> the only team that concerns me in Division Four, when I look at that scenario for Harper Woods, is going to be Chelsea. Because I think they match well with Adrian. I think they match well with Tecumseh. But the only team I'm worried about in that district, in that region, if they happen to play them, is Chelsea. <laughs> so that's the only team I'm worried about when it comes to Harper Woods. On the flip side for Farmington, um, schedule coming up is brutal. Two row games. Lake Orion and then Utica. Lake Orion's a lock in the playoffs. Utica's trying to get in the playoffs. But I do remember Utica did beat Farmington last year when Utica had nothing to play for. Do I, do I think it could happen to Farmington with Utica? Could they return the favor? Maybe. I mean, Cam Petaway's back for them. Um, but I think Farmington's going to have a really tough time in Lake Orion. I, I think they're going to have a really tough time. Um, but, you know, if Farmington were to pull off the upset and they went out, they're in the playoffs. But it's going to be a tough one. It would be very tough for Farmington going up to Lake Orion to play the Dragons on their homecoming. It's going to be really difficult, and especially the way Lake Orion is playing this year. And then they got Utica. Utica is a team that has been up and down this year. So, it'll be interesting to see what Coach Jason Albright has this, this week. It'll be very interesting to see what happens. But, Farms are going to have to play their best game if they want to upset the Dragons. So, we'll see what happens there. We'll see what happens there. Um, we got here, um, we got Groves 30, Bloompia Hills 6. Um, Groves did their job. That's really what they did. Went and beat a good Boomby Hills team by 24 points. I mean, Groves, they're rolling into the playoffs right now. They got confidence. They're rolling. Um, this is a team that I think could do some damage. I think they have a great chance to do very well. And I think they got a great chance here to do, you know, to make a ton of noise. Then on the flip side for Bloompy, I mean, they got, I mean, Groves has got Ferndale coming up, and then they got Seaholm to close the year. So, we'll see. On the flip side, you got, and then Bloompy Hill, this case, you know, I mean, see what happens in the final two games. They got Adams this week, North Farmington next week. North Farmington's at home, they're at Adams. I think that may be Adams' homecomings this week. So, if that were the case, perfect opponent for your homecoming. Um, I know there's three homecomings this week. I think Adams is one, Lake Orion's is one, and Clarkson's one. So, we'll see what happens there. The third one, Southfield Arts and Tech, 25-13 against Rochester. Really impressed with Rochester. They hung tough with Southfield Arts and Tech. Considering how good the Warriors have been all year long. For Southfield, I think this is a game they needed. Reason why? Pretty simple. Haven't really been tested ever since the Harper Woods game. And for them, this is a game they needed. Especially heading into this week's game against West Bloomfield. Because... 
if they were, you know, they were beating, blowing out people by um, almost 40 points, you know, one, it does a couple things. One, it's not getting your starters better. Two, it does get your reserves some playing time, some experience, you know, those blowout games. But you need a balance where you can do that. And I think the game with Rochester really helped South Harrison Tech and Coach Aaron Marshall out. I think it really did. Um, you know, albeit I don't know if Tashi Brace will play in that game. I don't know if he did or not. But Isaiah Marshall, had a, he was solid, especially with the weather conditions, what they were, the rain. I mean, it was really rough. I'll be honest with you there. Really rough. <laughs> but Rochester, they fought. They competed. Um, Give credit to Coach Eric Vernon. That team didn't quit. And I know this is their homecoming game. That was for sure. Um, But they didn't quit. And that's credit what credit's do. Really is. Um, Rochester... <laughs> Now we'll play Stony Creek coming up. Then they close out the year at Wall Lake Northern. Southfield. We know about West Bloom. We're going to talk that game coming up in a little bit. And then also Detroit Renaissance to close out the year. South, Southfield Arts and Tech solely in the playoffs. Solely. In. Now it comes down to where, where does the MHA put Southfield? Do they... The worst case scenario for a t is going north. If they go west or east, I like their chances. Even if Detroit Cast Tech's in there, I still would take and trust South Dakota Tech in that district. If Detroit Cast Tech's in there, if they go east, I take their I take my chances. The worst case scenario for A T is going north, toward West Bluefield, and especially toward Lake Orion. That is the worst case scenario for A T. Um, let's look at the red games here. Um, Adams 28-7 over Stony Creek. Um, <clears throat> again, Stony Creek limited offensively. Um, Jay McCarthy, Jay McCarthy's doing everything he, he can for that, for that team. He's doing everything he can. Um, you know, John, F I mean, Cam, F I mean, John Fogler, I mean, Cam Fogler, he's doing everything he can for them as well. Mikhail Parks is doing everything he can. They just haven't had a lot of good luck on their side. They really haven't. Um, which is why the one in six record. They got Rochester coming up. New Boston Rank Bay to close out the year. The Tyler fighting to get in the playoffs. I mean, for them, they got to win out. They got to win out if. They want to make the playoffs. I mean, last year, Stony Creek did take out New Baltimore Anchor Bay last year. Um, so that's where I'm seeing right now is Stony Creek. Only difference this year is there's no postseason hope for them this year. Really isn't. <laughs> but they do have a chance to make some noise, especially if they spoil New Baltimore Anchor Bay's this season up in New Baltimore. So, that's my take on Stoney. And this case, when you look at the Highlanders' case, they're for sure in the playoffs. I mean, I'm not eagerly worried about them. Um, Brady P scored a nice game back. Um, Ryan Waters, Ryan Waters, he had a nice game, bounced back for Adams. They should be just fine. Heading into the playoffs. They should be just fine. I mean, they got Sterling Heights teams coming up. That game will be in Sterling at Rochester over at Adams. Um, yes, people are going to say, well, you know, Sterling Heights teams, they did escape New Baltimore Anchor Bay 17 14. Um, but when you look at that matchup, I think Adams got a great chance to win that game. They do. If Adams can get some confidence in there, they could be a scary team. Come postseason time. They can be scary. Now, for Adams' case here when it comes to postseason, Lake Orion is a possibility. Lake Orion's in play for them. Um, Eisenhower, Utica Eisenhower's in play for them. Considering what Utica Eisenhower did to Macomb, Dakota. No thanks. But that would be scary 
for anybody who has to play Edith Eisenhower in the first round of the playoffs. That would be scary. Um, But if it's Adams, they got a shot. I think Adams has a shot if they play Utica Eisenhower. Yes, now Eisenhower's got Preston Crum. They've gotten a lot of players. They've gotten better. Um, but still, it's a difficult matchup, to say the least. It really is. So, we'll see how that one goes. Um, and then you have Oxford, West Bloomington, Oxford, with 38 19 in favor of um, West Bloomington over Oxford. Raekwon Nance had a big game for them, um, for the Lakers. Um, Elijah Durham, he had a nice game for them. Um, when you look at West Bloomfield's case, you know they're a lock-in. Defense is a question mark for me still. Even though there were some signs they had, they had a nice game against Oxford. But I've got serious concerns about that defense. And I know, and I and I watched Tyler Kemp's, um, you know, Lakers shows. I watched him very carefully. But I got some serious concerns about that defense. And when you look at where West Bloom might go, if they go north, that's going to be rough. If they go west, I like their chances. If you're in a district with Novi, Novi Detroit Catholic Central, um, maybe even Grand Ledge. That's a possibility. Because, but they might put Brighton in there. You know, it, maybe Brighton. You know, I think if West Bloom is in there, I think they got a great chance to do some significant damage. Um, but right now, West Bloom, if they can get that defense short up, get Bryce Rowe healthy, um, then maybe, who knows? then I think West Bloomington's got a great chance, you know what I mean, to do some damage. If they go south, that could be an issue. But I am very curious to see that game between West Bloomington and Southfield. That is going to be really interesting. We're going to preview that game in a couple minutes. But I'll tell you what right now. I mean, West Bloomfield, they've got to find a running attack. They've got to find their ground attack. Because I'll tell you what right now. Just chugging the ball down the field, you know, throwing the throwing throwing the ball down the field. That is not a recipe for success in the postseason. You've got to run the ball in the postseason. If you're Coach Jack Hilbers, you've got to start running the football. <laughs> you've got to. Because if you're one dimensional in the playoffs, that could be a problem. I mean, that's gonna be the key for West Bloomfield going forward. Um, especially when you get in the playoffs. I mean, your schedule, you got Southfield, you got Oak Park. Um, of course, the um, the um, Southfield games and in the Swamp. Uh, the Oak Park game, you know, that's on the road at Night Valley. <laughs> but there is a possibility that game could be moved to the Swamp. But we'll see. We'll see. And then on the Oxford side of things, when you look at them, the fact that they sit at two and five right now, but this team still has a pathway to the playoffs. You say, well, why is that? Because you look at their two games coming up: North Farmington and UD Jesuit. Both games are at home. They played a tough schedule. You look at everybody in the red. It's brutal. They got to win against Oak Park. <laughs> They played Utica Eisenhower. So, they have played a brutal schedule. And for them, if they can win out, they can get in the postseason. They knock off the UAD Jesuit, knock off North Farmington, they're in the playoffs. Now, yeah, they got to get some help. But I think if they win those two games, get some help, they're in the playoffs. And for Oxford, for a young team, they're going to need the extra practice for sure. But they got to win those two games. <laughs> if they lose one of them, they're done. That's really what it is. <laughs> it's 
If they lose out, they're done. Lose one, they're done. That's the key for Oxford. That's their motivation should be all week. Is one day at a time, one, you know, and especially when you get to Friday night, that's a must-win game for you. If you win, you win out, you're likely in the playoffs. I mean, you look at the stats, everything proves it. So, we'll see. We'll see. Like I said, right now, there's 10 teams that are battling for three spots in Division One right now. 10 teams. I should pretty much write a column on that for Division One. I should. But, when you look at the scenarios, there are a lot of scenarios out there for Oxford. I mean, for them, but the bottom line is, they've got to win out and then have some help. So that's really what I look at with Oxford. If they win out, get some help, they're going to be in the playoffs. No questions asked. And then we look at Clarkson, Lake Orion. Lake Orion won that one 42-21 behind a vaunted ground attack. Billy Roberson had three touchdowns. Tierra Hill had two touchdowns. Um, you know, when you look at Lake Orion, they just ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball. That's a winning formula, especially when you go in the postseason. Your offensive line looked very good. Um, Billy Roberson looks good. He looks healthy. I think the key for Lake Orion is make sure everybody's healthy. If you're Coach Chris Bell, make sure everybody's healthy. Make sure you don't do anything strenuous. You know, if you do, if you come into the playoffs healthy, that's a good sign going forward. Because if you're a team that's banged up, that could be some trouble. So when I look at the Dragons case, um, when you look at the postseason, People say, you know, the revenge tour, is it complete? I don't think it's complete for several reasons. They got Celine on the schedule. Celine beat him last year badly. <laughs> and then there's that possibility of Utica Eisenhower. Let's not forget last year, opening game. Lake Orion going in the end zone. Instead, throw a pick six. And then two plays later, they throw another pick six. That'll be a really interesting game between Lake Orion and Utica Eisenhower if those two teams play. Oi Red Champ against the Mac Red Champ. That would be very interesting. Considering what Utica Eisenhower did against Macomb, Dakota, shutting them out 31 nothing, that was impressive. Really impressive. I mean, so if you're like Orion, if you're like Orion, this could be, it's danger a little bit, but you're in a good place right now. You're in a real good place. Then on the flip side, you got Clarkston here. Um, just saw their four-game winning streak get snapped. Um, I think when you look at the Wolves, Brady Collins, he did get hurt in the game against Lake Orion. He did get hurt. I expect him back this week against Harper Woods. Um, I thought Clarkson did a lot of good things. Um, I think, you know, both lines up front had it rough with Lake Orion. I think albeit Lake Orion's offensive and defensive lines were, you know, played really well that game against him. Um, but Clarkson... I think they're fine. They're in the playoffs. Um, I think the Wolves are a team that really... They're going to be fine. I mean, they're going to be just fine. I mean, Desmond Stevens had two touchdowns. Brady Co Brody Cozen had a touchdown. Caught a touchdown. Um, I just think, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, I thought both Bowman twins had both of them had a... Had a rough game against Lake Orion. Um, but they're going to be fine. You got Harper Woods coming up on homecoming this week for them. 
Then they got Utica Eisenhardt, Swinehart, which is going to be really interesting. But when I look at Clarkson's postseason path, obviously everything for me flows north with Clarkson. You know, when you look at Davison, you look at Graham Blank, you look at Lapierre. I think if Graham, if Clarkson went north in the Davison, that is as that's gonna be golden for Clarkson. Because I'll tell you what, right now, I think that team matches up very well with Davison. Because yes, Davison's got some good early season wins against Granville, and they knocked off um, Warren D. the Sal early in the year. I mean, they beat Grand Blank as well. I mean, they got Grand Blank and Lapierre coming up. I mean, like, but when you look at, when you look at, and I've said this, and I've said this to, um, I mean, I've, and I would say this to the people at, in, on ABC 12. I'd say this to WNM TV 5. I would say this to NBC 25. I'll tell you what right now. For... Davison, Grand Blank, and Lapierre. The road for them to, for success would have to go through Oxford, Lake Orion, and Clarkston. Because if they want to have deep postseason runs, they have to go through those three towns for success. Now, yes, Grand Blank made the state semifinals a couple years ago, but they ran into Rochester Adams. Of course, Rochester Adams is another OA school. So the road to the OA, the road for those three teams, Davison, Grand Blank, and Lapeer, they go through Northern Oakland County. And Clarkson's had Davison's number. They have had their number. So when you really look at the situation how that's going. I think Grand Blank, I think I think that Clarkston, if they went north, that's perfect scenario for them. Perfect scenario for Clarkston would be going north, because if they go east in the Lake Orion, that's a little bit tough for them. That's going to be tough. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right, let's look at the um, week eight games coming up here. Um, we got the Battle of Woodward between Berkeley and Royal Oak. We got Avondale and Pontiac. And um, let's look at Avondale and Pontiac first. Pontiac's had an improving year. I mean, they have gotten better. They've gotten some wins under their belt. Um, three wins right now for Pontiac. It's a lot. Um, I think getting win number four this week is going to be a tough challenge. Especially when you look going up against a team that's in a real foul mood like Avondale is. Um, I'll tell you what right now. I like Avondale in this game convincingly. And that game's at Dick by Field. Um, so, I don't think it's going to be close. Um, I think Avondale wins that one pretty easily over Pontiac. I just think that's going to be the case right there. Um... Next, we had the Battle of Woodward. Um, you look at, of course, this is Berkeley and Royal Oak. This year's games at Royal Oak. Now, yes, I've been, I've loved Berkeley. I've loved the Berkeley Bear. And, you know, what they've done to Royal Oak the last few years has been just absolutely just mind-boggling. But I think this is the year for the Ravens. I just think this is the year. You look at what those two teams have been. I mean, it's been a complete opposite. Royal Oak's the team on the rise now. I think Colin Campbell has done a really good job with that program. He has built that program. They've had some good wins. They've been very competitive in a lot of those games. They had that tough loss to Troy Athens. But I'll tell you what. If they get that Battle of Woodward trophy from Berkeley, then that could be the start of something good for the Ravens. On the flip side with Berkeley, Sonny Cabbage has really struggled this year. Um, They have not been... I don't know where Berkeley's mindset's at. I don't know. Something's amiss over there at Catawba. Something's amiss. 
Something at Lexington is they've been very competitive. Very good. Very competitive despite the losses. So in this game here in the Battle of Woodward, of course, Berkeley takes a long takes a trip west. Um you know, west of Woodward into Lexington Boulevard. I think this is the year Royal Oak takes the trophy. I'm going to take the Ravens over the Bears in this one. I think it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be a tight game, but I just think Berkeley, I just think Royal Oak here is going to get the best of Berkeley this year. I think they're going to get the best in this year and take home the, um, and take home the Battle of Woodward um, street sign this year. <laughs> um, then we have Groves and Ferndale. Um, this one, Ferndale wins. They'll likely be a postseason team. Groves, we know what they got. Um, I see this being a win for Groves, pretty convincing over Ferndale. Um, don't know where their confidence is over at Ferndale, especially what happened last week against Oak Park. Um, but I, I've got the um, Falcons knocking off the Eagles in this one. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, let's go to the blue games. Um, obviously, <coughs> we got, um, we got North Farmington and Oxford. Um, this is a big game for Oxford, especially considering their playoff hopes. I think Oxford gets the job done because one, I think Luke Johnson's going to have a big game against North Farmington. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I mean, yeah, they got to go against Ryan Shelby. Um, but having to travel up to Oxford, it's never been easy for a Farmington school having to go up north into um, going up north in M24. Um, and I think, you know, I think that's going to be the case here. Um, I'm going to take Oxford over North Farmington um, for several reasons. I think the Raiders, um, I think the Wildcats, desperate. Um, I think Luke Johnson's going to have the best night of his life. I think he's going to have at least three touchdowns in that game. Um, and I think Oxford's going to keep riding that momentum, heading into UED Jesuit. Um, and then for North Farms, this loss, if they do lose, it doesn't kill them. It really doesn't, um, considering I think they're solidified in the playoffs. Um, but I'm going to take the Wildcats in this one over the Raiders in that one. Um... Seaholm and Oak Park. I think this one's at the forest. And Oak Park's postseason hopes are on the line in this one. Because I don't know if I see him beating West Blueville. Um, I like Seaholm in this game because of the Kenny boys. Because of Kyle Robbins. Um, I think the Maples, they do get the job done. Um... I think Seaholm gets the, um, I think Seaholm, you know, I think they're going to roll in this one. I mean, I think they're going to shut down Andre Guyton. I think they're going to shut him down. Um, I'm going to do just enough. So, but I'm going to take Seaholm in that one there and that one. The Battle of Troy. Troy, Athens, and Troy. This one's interesting. Because this one's going to be, I this is going to have, for all the marbles, Troy's coming off a good win against Berkeley. Troy Athens has won two, has won three, has won two straight. This is a rivalry game. Neither team likes each other. Troy's got the proven playmakers. Got Jalen Peacock. Nolan Block. Nate Orwe's really, really been proving himself a quarterback. Um, Troy Athens in this game has got injuries. <laughs> so does Troy for that matter. In this game here, a lot is riding against, against Troy Athens. Considering where they've been at. They've had that terrible loss to Frazier week one. Troy 
has played a virtually soft schedule. They've had three rough losses to Seaholm, North Farmington, and Oak Park. In this game here, somebody is going to get their first league win. I think I might be crazy here. And I think I might be bold enough. But I just can't take it. I like in this one here, honestly. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the upset. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna take the upset right now. I think Troy Athens goes in the Troy goes and beats Troy and stuns him. Because the way that they're playing right now. If that were the case, I can imagine how Vernon Bird and the principal at Troy Athens would be. Cause I know he's been really frustrated all year long with that team. But I think if Troy Athens beats Troy, one, that damages Troy's postseason hopes. Two, that gets Troy Athens some confidence, especially being a postseason team. You know, whoever wins that game could be a playoff team. Albeit Troy's got to play Frazier to close out the year. Troy Athens, Utica Ford um, over at Runkle. Um... But I, I think Troy Athens, they've heard enough of Troy. They're fed up with it. I think they go in there. I think I think they go in and pull up the upset. I think they got a great chance to pull it off. See what happens there in that game. We will. Now we got the red-white crossover this week. Starting with Adams and Bloomfield Hills. Man, this is going to be a rough night for Bloomfield Hills. Apologies to the Blackhawks. Highlanders are going to win this one pretty convincingly. Um, Bray Priest going probably will play maybe maybe a half. Um, Ryan Ryan Waters will probably play a half because I don't see how Boomba Hills is going to beat Adams. I really don't. Um, Lake Orion Farmington. This is going to be another another bloodbath coming. Um, I've got Lake Orion pretty convincingly in this one. I don't know how Farms is going to stop Billy Roberson, Raymond Payne, T.R. Hill. Um, and those are three guys I really see playing for only half. Um, and then you have Lake Orion's defense has been playing really well lately. Um, I mean, yeah, Farms has got Camp Petaway. Um, um, but I just think at the end of the day here, I just think Lake Orion wins that one pretty convincingly over Farmington. And it's Lake Orion's homecoming. So I've got Lake Orion over Farmington there. Um, Again, we've already talked Oxford against um, UAD against um, North Farmington. We already talked that earlier. Um, And then we have probably, I think, the two most interesting games of the weekend. Um, The first one we have here is West Bloomfield against South Edison Tech. Well, actually, we got Rochester Stony Creek first. I forgot to mention that one. Um, this one could be very interesting because I know last year Stony beat Rochester in the regular season. Rochester got him in the playoffs. So this one, you know, and I think this is the Falcon Frenzy game over at Rochester. Um, in this matchup here. I think that Stony Creek goes and beats them. I, I really like what the Cougars have. I mean, Jay McCarthy, um, Jay McCarty, I think he's going to have a big night here against Rochester. Now, yes, they got Jack, Rochester got Jack Lower. Um, but I just think in this game here, I gotta, I'm got i going to take Stony Creek in this one. Um, be a good win for Coach Nick Merlo, going back to his former roots at Rochester. Um, but I, I just think at the end of the day here, I just think, Playing that type of schedule, playing the red schedule, I think helps Stony Creek in this game, and I think they're going to win that game. So I've got big, um, I got Cougar Core over um, Big Blue. Um, so that is going to be a really interesting matchup, to say the least, there in that one there. Um, and then we got the two most interesting games of the weekend. Um, we got Rochester. And uh, that's what we got. West Bloomfield and Suffolk Earth and Tech. And then Clarks and Harper Woods. Um, with, um, with Clarkston and, um, 
with Clarkson, Harper. I mean, with West moving and Safford Arson Tech, this is going to be, this one's interesting. A lot of star power here. Um, This is going to be a good test for Southfield to see where they're at. Considering that they haven't been tested since Detroit, since playing um Harper Woods. So when you look at that, and the game with Rochester, I think kind of helped them last week a little bit. So I'm looking at the matchup. And I'm saying to myself, okay. <laughs> if West Bloomfield defensively was healthy, is this going to be, and especially their second year, you know, you got Bryce Bro, Jameer Benjamin there. Um, if they were healthy, does this score, <coughs> does it put much more pressure on Isaiah Marshall? I think it does. I think West Bloom's injuries defensively is going to be the key. But on the flip side, Southfield's defense has been solid late, lately. But they haven't been tested since Harper Woods. They really haven't been. West Bloomfield's going to give Southfield a ton of problems. They're going to give them a lot of problems. I know Tyler kept the boys at um, CCTV over at um, West Bloomfield. They're going to be in for a treat game. Because I think this is going to be a very... I think this will be a classic over there. I ain't going to be a classic. Um, But you know what I'm going to say here? I'm going to take the L boys in this one. Pretty simple. Raekwon Nance. I think watch for Nigel Dutton in this game. Here's why. He used to play at Southfield. He played. He knows this rivalry really well. Played for both teams. I think he has a big game against his former team. I think he's the difference maker in that game. And for West Bloomfield, a team that needs a win desperately, like this against a team like Southfield Arts and Tech, who's been rolling. If they can get this win, this will be huge for them. I've got the L boys in this game tight. <laughs> really close. So I'm going to take West Bloomfield in this game against Southfield Arts and Tech. It'll be a heck of a game between those two teams. And last but not least, we got Clarkson's homecoming. Clarkston against Harper Woods. A lot of star power in this game. Can Clarkson's defense get to Nate Marshall? That is the big question. Can they get to Ramity House? Can they get to Jacoby Taylor? Can they get to Dakota Garriott? Because you know Des Steve is going to be covering Garriott. This is going to be interesting. But also the questions on Harper Woods' defense. Do they have the athletes to match up with Brody Cozen and Desmond Stevens? Do they have the size to match up with them? That's the question. Coaching matchups also interesting. Between Coach Rob Olden and um and also Coach um Justin Pinter. That's interesting there. Does Jacob Olden come back and play in this game? A lot of storylines. A lot of storylines in this game. They also add the fact that it's Clarkson's homecoming. So when you look at this matchup here, people say. Clarkson should roll in this game. I don't necessarily think so. I think this is going to be closer than the experts think. Because you know Harper Woods, they're not afraid to travel. They've been... They've been in Notre Dame prep in their history. They've been up north in their history. I mean, as an independent for coming in the league. I mean, they've been everywhere around the state. Do I think... Are they... Do I think they can go and beat Clarkson? There's a shot they can beat Clarkson. Do I see it happening? I don't see it. Because I think Clarkson's line is deeper. Clarkson can cut several guys that go one way, which I think is going to be instrumental. And I think Brody Collins is going to be in for a bounce back game. Now, albeit Harper Woods' defense is very good. But I look at that game for Harper Woods against Lake Orion, where... Lake Orion's defense just really exposed Harper Woods in that game. They really did. 
Um, but for Harper Woods, if they get this one, it'll be a big win for them. Monster win for them. <laughs> but the Aura Clarkston's there. It's Clarkston's homecoming. I think Des Stevens gets a bounce back game. I think Brody Cozen has a bounce back game. The bottom line is here. I think the Wolves bounce back and roll in this game. So we'll see what happens. Before I sign on off here, I'm going to have the um, Soccer District preview coming up this week here. I'm um, Anthony Termian, of course, the host of History Now. He will um, write his thoughts on there. So follow the blog at Saga by 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information. Previewing the Soccer Districts coming up. So we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog. As I mentioned, take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. Everybody, take care. See you then. God bless all. God bless everybody.